بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه سبحانك ربنا لا نحصي ثناء عليك أنت كما أثنيت على نفسك وصل اللهم وسلم وبارك على النبي محمد Ahbab, tonight, alhamdulillah, we continue with the eight, the 16th, pardon me, the 16th chapter, which is Surah Al-Nahl, Surah Al-Nahl, the B. And this chapter has 128 ayahs. And the meaning behind the name, we're told, Al-Hashratu Al-Ma'rufa, wa mufraduha Al-Nahlatu, tuqalu li dhakari wal untha. So, Al-Nahl is the, the B, basically. And Everybody is aware of that beautiful insect that we get our honey from that helps to pollinate uh, everything that's out there and Allah Ta'ala protect them because they are uh, severely threatened by everything of pesticides and herbicides and different types of poisons that are out there and it is severely impacting everything of our agriculture. Um, we're told that the singular form in the Arabic is Nahlatu with the Ta Marbuta at the end and it is the same for the male and the female which is, you know, uh, rare in the Arabic language that you ha don't have a male version, a female version of the noun. So to have it mentioned for both is uh, a very unique thing, subhanAllah. Sababu tasmiyatihi. Why is it named after the bee? We're told, infirad surati bi dhikri mufradatin nahl. Because it is the only place in the Qur'an that the bee is mentioned. And for that purpose, Allah Rabbul Alameen chose to name the chapter as a whole uh, uniquely because of this. We don't have, pardon me, we have as far as the names are concerned, other than An-Nahl, to some Masurat An-Ni'am. An-Ni'am. It is also referred to as the chapter of blessings. Of blessings. So it has the two names, An-Ni'am and An-Nahl. Maqsidu al am the general objectives of the chapter, we're told that it is That in this chapter we are reminded of the multitude of Allah Rabbul Alameen's blessings As well as being grateful and appreciative to the bestower of those blessings, Allah Rabbul Alameen the Most High with tahdiru min al kufri biha as well as the warning to be ungrateful to Allah Rabbul Alameen as well as His blessings, as well as His blessings. Sababu Nuzuliha, it was revealed as a Meccan, it is a Meccan chapter, pardon me, and we don't have a reason for the entirety of the chapter being revealed, but we do have some of those verses from it that have been revealed, we do have authentic narrations for some of them. As far as the virtues are concerned, we have nothing authentic with regards to it, um, except that it has been given a name, and this is included among those chapters that are referred to as Al-Mi'een. Al-Mi'een meaning those that have a hundred verses and up. So, but is that a virtue in and of itself? Allahu alam. It's not necessarily regarded as one, but it has been given this kind of a nickname of a reference. Munasabatuha. Munasabatu awwali surati bi akhiriha al amru bi taqwa Allah wal hadithu an ma'iyati lahi ta'ala lil muttaqeen. Subhanallah, this is beautiful. So, the relationship of the chapter as a whole, the focus is basically telling us about. Allah Azzawajal's directive for humanity to be mindful of Him, to guard their relationship with Him, to protect themselves from the devil who seeks to destroy us, as well as Allah Ta'ala's closeness to us, Allah Ta'ala's nearness with us. And this is especially for the people who practice taqwa, which are the muttaqi. So Allah Rabbul Alameen says in the beginning of the chapter, أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا أَنَا فَاتَّقُونَ There is no God besides me, therefore guard your relationship with me, guard your beliefs of me, guard your worship of me, guard everything that there is between you and me, Allah Rabbul Alameen is saying, so guard 
yourself from the devil so that this way he does not come between you and me. And he says in the end, Indeed, Allah is with the people who practice and live with taqwa and with the people who are beautiful, who are beautiful, muhsinun. Not beautiful just in the physical sense of what we may be thinking, but beautiful because they are living with taqwa. It is a beauty that emanates from the core, so it's from the inside and then it manifests itself outwardly. So it's not about, you know, mashallah, how, how much dye you have in your hair and, you know, how groomed you are and things of that sort. Those are all nice things and those are all beautiful things. But the true beauty is that beauty that's a manifestation of a person who from their, their soul, their heart, because they are living for Allah Rabbul Alameen and they are living mindful of Him, that their lives are oriented around them, subhana. And they do that by manifesting the guidance that the Messenger himself sallallahu alayhi wa embodied. They are beautiful. They are beautiful with Allah Rabbul Alameen and they are beautiful to the believers. And they are beautiful in everything of what they say and what they do. Well, how about the relationship of Al-Nahl with Al-Hijr? This chapter to the previous one. So we're told خُتِمَتْ الْحِجْرُ بِتَوْجِيهِ النَّبِيِّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ بِمُدَاوَمَةِ الْعِبَادَةِ حَتَّى يَنْقَضِيَ أَجَلُهُ So we're told that Surah Al-Hijr concluded with Allah Rabbul Alameen directing the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم to remain resilient and consistent in his devotion, worship of Allah Rabbul Alameen until the day he dies. فَقَالَ سُبْحَانَ وَعْبُدْ رَبَّكَ حَتَّى يَأْتِيَكَ الْيَقِينَ And worship your master until that which is certain or certainty itself comes to you. And death is regarded here as, as certainty. Everybody is going to die regardless of who, regardless of what. Subhanallah. And he begins Surah Al-Nahl saying, وَفْتُتِحَتْ بِقَضَاءِ أَمْرِ اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ وَعَدَمِ اسْتِئْجَالِهِ he begins the chapter by saying or mentioning Allah Ta'ala's decree. It's going to happen, it's inevitable. Therefore, don't rush, don't hasten to anything because everything is going to happen according to Allah Ta'ala's decree in Allah's time. He says, Ata amrullahi fala subhanahu wa ta'ala amma yushrikun. Allah's decree has come, therefore don't hasten anything, don't rush. Pure and perfect is He, the Most High, above everything that they ascribe to Him, that they attribute to Him. So Allah Rabbul Alameen who told the Prophet والسلام, to continue to worship His Master, His Lord, until He dies, the decree of Allah Rabbul Alameen which is certain that the decree of Allah Ta'ala has come and there is nothing to rush it and nothing that he should be rushing with regards to it and he should just understand that Allah Azza is perfect and anything and everything of what they ascribe to Allah Rabbul Alameen and whatever it is that they may say, all of that is nonsense and Allah Rabbul Alameen is in control and he's going to take care of everything and there's no one that's going to escape his decree Therefore, don't get stressed out, but rather you continue to do your part, continue to worship Allah Rabbul Alameen and have that sense of security knowing that Allah Rabbul Alameen's got this. And we pray that Allah Ta'ala give us that sense of certainty to understand and to truly be able to live knowing that Allah Azawajal is in control and He's got this so that we do not stress out unnecessarily, nor do we in any way treat the people as though they are the enemies, rather to continue to do our best to guide them to Allah Rabbul Alameen and to leave it to Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we ask Him Jalla wa ala that He bless us to be role models as His Messenger alayhi salatu wa salam was, that we are miniatures of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and everything of our beliefs, of our worship and of our manners. Allahumma ameen wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barak ala nabiyyina Muhammad.